Oh my god. Isolation Nation, hello? <laughs> you can PayPal us in the upper right. You can Instagram Live watch us on Instagram Live. It's our favorite place to watch the show. God damn fuck it, you man. if you're a heckler. Go fuck yourself. Please welcome the second leg of the social distancing social club quarantine that makes up the tripod, Mr. Steve Hofstetter. Ben, I appreciate that. Your impression of me sounds a great deal like your Barry Cats for some reason. No, but... this is my Barry Cats. It's really wonderful to be here. I would never, never cats you. Well, all right. Ben already told you how to support the show. We appreciate you being here. Throw in those tips. We appreciate the Facebook stars, Super Chats, PayPal, Venmo, PayPal and Venmo. Uh, we appreciate the most because, of course, uh, YouTube takes a crazy percentage. But that said, ladies and gentlemen, uh i was about i'm about to introduce uh the third leg of the shut leg. up i'm introducing the third leg you shut up you shut up <laughs> it's the third leg of the quarantine chris bowers everybody chris bowers hello hello how are we hey we're Bow-wow. good you okay i am hung over as shit guys i don't know what happened to me Rachel's bottle of wine did not go well, apparently. I don't know, but I'm about to die. Anyway, how we doing, everybody? Good. Everything's normal, man. You sound a little congested, but everything's normal. Yeah, you look I, normal. I Who feel like that? I should get my glasses. This is... Uh... Wait, that's, that's Steve? Is he being Steve? He is. Oh, God. That's... Oh, my God, Bowers. Are you going to be okay today? <laughs> you you uh, seem in bad shape. I've not been hung over in a very long time, and I don't know if I haven't been drinking as much lately, so I didn't, I don't know. It fucking snuck up on me. I apologize. This isn't very professional. Uh, but Jared's here for Queen Rachel. Jared, how you doing, buddy? Queen! Hello! Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Great to be back. Great to be back. I'm, I'm, working on a, I'm working on a new laugh for you guys, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Hey, don't fuck those guys. Don't let them. Don't let them make you feel bad about your laugh. It's a great. I, laugh. You know, I like to change it up every couple of months, anyways. So I was due. Just, uh, just keep an eye. Keep your eyes peeled. Keep your ears peeled. Yeah, every Jared. Time. Actually, I know this from touring with him. Jared uh, has a new laugh uh, quarterly. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's fun when it happens on tour because then they get to see the transition. Like when a when a you know like when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. I, I, I was gonna say more of a werewolf, but yeah. That's... <laughs> I used to have a subscription to Jarrett's Quarterly Laugh, but I let it run out. <laughs> well, thanks to you, you let it laugh. To fire three of our reporters. So, <laughs> I missed when your laugh became that sound. Maybe I wasn't on that episode, I think. It was months ago or weeks ago. It was a while ago. I yeah, missed- it was exactly three months ago. That's how this oh. works for Jared. So, so <laughs> really, he, he, he laughs like a, like a bug coming or something? No, just, that's what I'm it. It's it's more of a hmm. It will, as I am gonna try my best to not do it. It 100 percent will still happen on the show. So. I want to hear it really bad, so I hope that does happen because I can't imagine possibly how somebody could laugh with that sound. Well, you'll you'll, you'll, you'll hear it. Don't worry about it. And I think the <laughs> well, you, didn't, you didn't hear it last time is you didn't get any laughs and you only listened to your own jokes. I think it might be. Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> By the way, I'm glad that you said that to him when he was not wearing my face. I don't, I don't, I don't know what you said. I wasn't listening. One more time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we, we, speaking of me being hungover, we had a fun overnight game, which was SDSC drinking game. So it was some drinking games. Be they would play with the show. Uh, Shannon Savage had drink whenever Steve tries to self-deprecate and fails, which I thought was funny. <laughs> I'm the worst at that, let me tell you. Pretty bad at something. <laughs> and other, Rachel, and, and, and other Rachel said, drink every time Chris LaBelle's glory hole is referenced. So I think that's she means the, the whole <laughs> So uh, that, that works for me as well. I like that one. So those are two you can drink with, guys. What's today's game, Steve? Today's game, uh, we haven't penised anything in a while. And so even though uh, even though we have, you know, it's it's been zero days since we've referenced a penis, we have not penised anything in a while. So what we're going to do today is we're going to penis a 90s movie. So take the word penis and put it in the title of a 90s movie. Uh, and we're going to be clear, 90s only. Don't try to stretch this. Don't go like 2002 and have my big fat Greek penis. Like, no, only 1990s, okay? Uh, so... Can hardly penis in the '90s, or was that early 2000s? <laughs> I don't know offhand. We'll have to look that up for the judges. But some examples: uh, good penis hunting, or uh, the Damon Wayans classic, Major Pain. You can make that penis pain. The point is, 
take the word penis and put it in the title of any movie from the 1990s. The way you participate in the game is you comment on any of our streams, whether it is our Facebook, our YouTube, our Twitch, or our Twitter. But if you want yours to count toward the contest at the end of the show, as well as have a much better chance of being read on air, throw in at least a $5 tip, a Venmo, a PayPal, a Super Chat, and we'll get to those at the end. Just to warn all audience people who are going to put in penis hard. Die Hard was 1988, so get that out of your system. <laughs> you got to put penis hard too. That was penis hard. Get, that penis, get that penis out of your system, just to make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, people are already having a good time with this game, uh, so so let's uh, let's do it. I can't wait. I also would love to do an impression of Steve being self-deprecating. Okay. Okay. Um. So this one time when I was a kid. Uh, all these women were hitting on me, right? And so these women are hitting on me, and they said how funny I was, and so it's crazy. When I was a kid? <laughs> I don't know, you know. <laughs> you were very right. sexy your whole life, Steve. You are very <laughs> irresistible. <laughs> From what I, everything I hear. No, Steve didn't get laid so much in high school, he, got, he wrote a book, which is what Ben's about to do after the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Don't you hate when you write a book that everybody loves and references all the time? Um, it's the worst. I hate how I kind of like this impression actually. Ben's Ben's kind of making fun of me, but really he's just complimenting me. Like yeah, that's his Yeah, I'm just throwing your credits in there. I'm like <laughs> Yeah. And half and half a billion subscribers and views to my videos is the worst. It's not quite how he does it, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to... I, I, I I can't figure out Steve. I'm pretty darn good at impressions. And I can't get Steve. I, I came, I tried my best for the hundredth episode, or the fiftieth, and it was still was not good voice wise. Very challenging. Video front row, please join us. Do your best, Hofstetter, if you got one. <laughs> Hofstetter room, if you got them. Uh, we've got also a Steve filter with Lady Corbin right there. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Lee Dishes. Fuck you and your love. <laughs> I gotta say, she nailed the voice too. That was perfect. <laughs> We've got Shaquille Syed here joining us with Sean Ehrlich's "The Politics of Fair Trade" book in the background. Talk about nice. sexy. I love that. Jen Winkleplex is back with us. Hello, Winkleplex, straight from the Winkleplex. We got Shannon Burke here with us with a brand new painting for us in the background. We, which is uh, sometimes it's, it's now a, a man looking uncomfortable in a Christmas sweater, kind of a gimp face mask as well. It's very <laughs> interesting. I love that. We are joined by Hayden LaMaster, everybody. Hello, Hayden. Graphics extraordinaire. We've got YouTube archaeologist Rob. Love that. And we've got key archaeologist. Lady Corbin just covered that. We've got Jan Skittles Johnston with us outside, but a new angle, new side of the house. Maybe better to receive direct TV signal. We've got Marissa Mayrick joining us. Hello, Marissa. She's knitting stuff. We've got Tina from New Zealand coming to us from... Can't remember. We've got <laughs> Matthew Plummer here with us, coming to us from Four Seasons Total Landscaping, it looks like. We've got LJ Mutz, the proud owner of... You hear that, Carmel? <laughs> We've got Allison West joining us from this, her usual spot. Nasty women keep. That's what the shirt says. Nasty women keep. Oh, fighting. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I thought you were saying that they don't go bad. Nasty women keep. Zara Bendings here from Australia. Hello. Welcome to have you. Welcome to have you. That's not a sentence at all. Winter is coming is here with us from a very wintry background and a shadowy situation. A little creepy if you ask me. We've got Timothy with the hat that I won't read out loud, but I I, I hear you. We've got <laughs> Justin Shearer is with us wearing a uh, t spare T-shirt on his sleeve and on his shoulder in case he runs out of his current one. I it's love a that. That's a oh the hoodie's on the side there. He's got like a side hood. It's there a it's go. a shadow, Ben. It was not a shadow. It was that the hood was resting here on the shoulder like a parrot. It was <laughs> Yeah, it was doing right. that. And we got Frank Nataro back angle. Back angle Frankles. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Awesome. We also have two uh, awesome comics, as always. Augie <laughs> Smith is back with us. How you doing, Augie, buddy? How you doing? 
<laughs> outstanding. You're doing outstanding. There it is. Awesome. Wearing a jacket in the kitchen. I like it. I'm proud of you. That's right. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> I have a, a bit of an on and off relationship with a lot of you. <laughs> I know that the audience, a guy like Hofstetter, I think he's harmless enough. Look at him, all pale and red, looking like Morgan Spurlock has the Rona. But what they don't know, <laughs> he spends most of his off time destroying people. He destroys them and he puts it up online. Now, let me tell you something, Hofstetter. One of those women was my aunt. <laughs> oh, we wanted to know where the bathroom was. And she was telling me the C word, and she was destroyed. destroyed. She was a lawyer in a pretty good firm. And now, four years later, she lives in a tent city and sells chiclets on the beach. <laughs> Augie, Augie has been waiting for this moment like I'm the six fingered man. <laughs> hey, if you've got that six fingers, hilarious. that might be explain a lot of things. Uh, we also All she wanted was to go to the bathroom and he called her the C word for six minutes. Your <laughs> <laughs> actions have consequences. Uh, Lori Kilmartin is always also here. Lori, back. Lori, how you doing? Woo! I'm good. I enjoyed watching Augie. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but he just had a third child. So uh, a lot of that rage at you, Steve, was actually directed at an infant. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if that infant interrupts my show, he's fucking done. <laughs> Oh, he will. <laughs> that is a great idea for a series. Steve Hofstetter, after the destruction. We find the people you destroyed and see what their life's like now. Probably just as shitty as it was before. <laughs> we just keep cutting back to Steve making sarcastic comments over their sad, sad uh, documentary of their current lives. It's not been the same. All of my confidence is shaken. Good, you dummy. People who are just genuinely happy just go to shows and enjoy the show. None of these people were ha were inner hap had inner happiness before. They were all upset already. I didn't. I changed nothing. I, I love the idea of an inspirational series following people who were destroyed but somehow kept going. Like maybe that can motivate all of us in these terrible times. It, it would be called the Heckler Phoenix. <laughs> Heckler rising, I love which is it. actually uh, where I've been heckled a great deal of time. Yeah, <laughs> same. Phoenix crowds are a little mouthy. <laughs> well, so are Phoenix club owners. I mean, they learn from the best. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Lori. Which, by the way, I, I really should stop making fun of you for the destroying as a man who is currently editing his own stand-up videos that I am titling a good thirty percent of comedian destroys blank. <laughs> Comedian destroys editing schedule. <laughs> I wonder if comedian mildly harms women in the front row, just as a test, just to see how well it would do. Oh, God. <laughs> One of the things that uh, uh, that I get uh, a lot of shit for in comments, people all the time will be like, how come you say comedian and not just I? And I'm like, because titles are written in the third person. Like, no one's searching YouTube for I destroyed heckler. <laughs> Like, that's why it's called the Colbert Rapport and not my rapport. <laughs> it's also an acknowledgement that unless you're Kevin Hart, you're just a comedian. Right, and yes. knows our names, and they just, they almost know our profession, and that's about it. I tried for a little while to have it, like, with my name, and that did not perform as well, because no one was fucking searching for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I most shows with your name don't perform as well. <laughs> I mean, when we put your name on a political campaign, it doesn't go well. Most times, <laughs> touche. <laughs> All right, Jared, we got anything coming in yet? Uh, we got two generals. We got um, five dollars from Hunter Timoteo. Why can I smell this podcast? It's not a bad smell exactly. Just Jarrett that I can smell it. I don't understand. 
<laughs> well, obviously, you don't have coronavirus, so congratulations. If you can smell shit, you're doing good. Is it a yeah. pun, Hunter? Just Jared that I can smell it? Just Jared that I... Yeah, I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, thanks for the tip. And uh, we also got $2 Canadian from uh, Technics. Uh, Jared, for your quarterly new laugh training fund. Thank you very much. That's going to go a long way. <laughs> <laughs> we also have uh, Ashley D uh, threw in a Venmo tip and uh, said, uh, for Jared, good to see you. And then also complimented Jared's podcast. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah, Jared has a great podcast with a couple of the other regulars on the show called Is This Anything? So make sure to uh, make sure to check that out when you can. Jared, what are, what are the three finalists of your new laugh? Do you have three examples of your new laugh that you're working uh, on? I'm working on uh, Tut Tut Tut. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good uh, one. I don't, I don't even know. Okay. Good, yeah. good laugh for the Egyptian crowds. I like that. I don't even know if I need to hear the other two. I'll be honest. <laughs> that one's got your vote already? Well, you know, sit back. I've also got uh, sh ba -ba 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 -ba. That's my I'm name. I'm still going tut tut tut. Yeah, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. on tut tut. I like the Yoshi though. And then this last one is uh, it's for a younger crowd. The you know the kids that go to the raves. It's a wicka 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 wicka. Oh, you know what a winner. laugh is, Jared. I'm not. I'm just... <laughs> when you when you make. enjoy a joke, when you find something funny, then you make an unconscious <laughs> noise. Have but that noise like can waka? be anything. It Have can be anything waka, that you waka, want. Waka. Maybe waka 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 could be your thing. That's yeah, I think <laughs> well that's somebody's already. I'm 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 oh. many things I am not a laugh plagiarist. And I feel like you fully misunderstand what laughs are. You don't get to decide what they are. Hmm? You mean like the noise that you make? Correct. No, no, no. I just uh, that's the kind of I don't know, bodily autonomy that I have, the kind of control over my okay. over my autonomous systems. It's actually not that. It's the opposite. You are not letting your body be free. You're controlling your own body. My you body should. would be lost without the tyrannical fist of my control. So, so Jared, do you, do you also control your, your cum, cum noise? Or is that <laughs> spontaneous? That's real. actually where he got tut 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 from. <laughs> I, I have a feeling he goes, ha cha cha cha. That sounds like <laughs> I also wish that you would not talk about your body and then say fist in the same sentence. <laughs> I like the idea that you could, could you, you, it just has to be a sound. It could be any sound. Yeah, it can so, be. Like, yeah. What if, what, like, what if your laugh is just like, this show sucks? My God, it'd be so confusing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course. For a while, my laugh was. Yeah, for a while, my 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 uh, my laugh was crickets. So <laughs> it was difficult for comedians. Uh, by the way, uh, Gypsy Lemoyne also threw us in a Venmo and said, uh, watching yesterday's live, thanks for the joy, uh, and Rachel, love you. Steve, you're delightful. I swear she said that. I did not, I did not add. <laughs> wow, two out of four there on that comment, huh? Okay. <laughs> Hours, you and I are going to be drinking together later, it looks like. Uh, I'm not going to be drinking for a minute. No, I'll probably be drinking. <laughs> Hours, hair of the dog, man. The best way to overcome a hangover is to get drunk again. You know that. Nah, I've never, that's never been my thing. I've never really? No, nah, it's four Advil and an hour and a half of sleep. That's what I need. But I only got 30 minutes of sleep, so I got to do another hour or something. 30 minutes total of sleep? Wait, you're not hungover. You're tired. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I went to bed and then woke up hungover, so I took four a leave and then went back to sleep for half an hour, which is why I was late. But I needed an hour and a half, not a half an hour. That's Did you just say you took four a leave? You took four a leave? Yeah. The pill you're supposed to take one all day? <laughs> Let's take two, but I'm a big fat guy, so I take four. Ooh. Math checks out. I also eat four hot dogs and two bags of chips. I mean, I, I, I double this everything. This is the pilot Man. episode of of Drug Quantum Leap. <laughs> ben, it clearly says on the Aleve bottle, one Aleve for every hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> it does have a weight scale. Your Aleve doesn't come with a weight scale on the back? <laughs> how many pills you're supposed to take by how much you weigh? No? Okay. No, I don't think so. All right, you let's do a set. You're not supposed to drink and and have a leave at the same time, right? That's that's actually pretty dangerous. Well, I didn't drink. I didn't take the leave while I was drinking. I took it the okay, next day. Good. Just How else did you wash it down? Huh? I used water. You're, you're drinking. You're using pills called a, a leave of absence. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I I have the knockoff called a leave of their own, but it's the same kind. Of <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Lori? I, I just said this show has been very helpful and knowledgeable to me. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Was not expecting this. 
this from you. We're here for, we're here for <laughs> drug tips. All right, Paris, you want to introduce Augie? <laughs> sure. Uh, coming next, he did have a baby like, what, eight days ago? I can't believe he's still awake uh, mm -hmm. for himself. Augie Smith, everybody. Whee! Thanks, guys. My <laughs> sweetie. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to do the thing everybody does. I'm not going to bitch about the Zoom show. Uh, let's just start. I love Zoom comedy. I was made for Zoom comedy. <laughs> First of all, it eliminates human interaction, which I think we can all agree was the absolute worst part of any comedy show when you had to sit there afterwards and sell your goddamn merchandise like you're a regular person and not a goddamn brilliant artist. And the sad part is, is that I have a garage full of 2000 compact discs that I was sure would be a technology uh -huh. that would last forever. So I bought 10,000 of them, but that was like a year and a half ago. What did I know? Maybe I should <laughs> compact disc players if I'm going to sell compact discs. And the other thing is, I don't even know why you're laughing. Maybe it's my jokes. Maybe a dog's licking your foot. I don't give a shit. I'm going to take the assist either way. So as was pointed out, uh, the wife and I are about 10 months into a pregnancy scare. <laughs> <laughs> The exciting one about this one, it was born on uh, it. Gender's fluid, baby. Uh, it was born on uh, on uh, Veterans Day. Uh, so I got to use this joke. I got to ask all the nurses if any of them had served, and one of them had been in the Air Force. So I got to say thank you for your cervix. Oh, big laughs on that one. And another one, uh, when they're looking in and they're uh, checking the wife's vagina, which is what they do, I said, uh, let me know if you find any ballots in there. Oh, another big laugh. <laughs> the point is, I got some good tweets out of this baby, and that's all I was looking for. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is three of them. I got three kids, uh, and I'm raising them in Los Angeles. They're very LA. My kids are very LA. Uh, my oldest boy uh, has a food allergy. <laughs> uh, his particular allergy is to eggs. Uh, which is weird because he's half egg <laughs> <laughs> on his mother's side. <laughs> if you have a kid with a food allergy, you know that you need something called an EpiPen. It's called an EpiPen. And here's the thing about the EpiPen is it's not a pen. Don't let the name fool you. It's, it's a needle. It's not a pen. If you don't believe me, try to address an envelope with your EpiPen. It will not go well. You'll leave a hole in it. It is a needle. It is not a pen. And it costs $650. It costs 600 and I live in LA, okay? There are needles everywhere. They are everywhere. Oh, none of those are good enough for my kid, right? He's got to have this very specific $650 needle. And by the way, it also expires. The needle expires. The last time I gave my kid eggs, I did it just to get my money's worth. <laughs> if that thing expires on February 17th, February 16th is starting with an omelet, or as we'll know it, the day daddy saved your life. You're probably wondering, <laughs> how are the dad jokes coming, Og? That's what you're asking yourself. Here's one. Uh, I have an adorable uh, little four-year-old girl, and I asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up, and I said, you like animals? Do you think you'd like to be a veterinarian? And she said, no, daddy, I just want to be the Hulk. And I said, well, it's a growth industry. <laughs> and oh, I, used, I used to do drugs given to me by strangers. That's how things have changed in my life. Now that is a joke <laughs> that I tell. But for 20 years, I would do anything given to me by people walking out of my show. The uh, <laughs> new thing that, they, that the kids love is uh, they like to be sidewalk chalk. They lay down on the sidewalk, and then I trace them in bright colors with sidewalk chalk and then they color it in. So my driveway looks like the site of the most adorable massacre in history. <laughs> it's like a disgruntled Keebler elf came back to exact God's reckoning on his coworkers. It looks like, you know, you know, Jonestown? Imagine that with Care Bears. <laughs> That's so sad now, is it? <laughs> you have one of my favorites coming on uh, before I go uh, I'll just say this uh, if you're wondering uh, a little bit more about Augie Smith here's a little bit more about me uh, oh here's some uh, I 
Augie Smith have been to the Anne Frank House. The Anne Frank House is the place that you end up if you wait till you're married to visit Amsterdam. Augie <laughs> 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 Smith, everybody. Augie Smith, Smith. Tip jar is open. <laughs> Top right of the screen is our Venmo. You can pay pal at sdstshow.com, of course. <laughs> You can super chat, uh, send them all the stuff for the baby registries and all that. Uh, and, you know, maybe buy one of those uh, 2,000 compact discs. That'd be good. Yeah. Augie, I feel uh, no compassion for you whatsoever. My garage is full of Steve Hossiter 8-track cassette tapes. Really thought about six months ago those were going to be big, but I was incorrect. So. But the good news is right now, if you buy one of Augie's CDs, he throws in 300 CDs. <laughs> I'm not impressed and a by child. Exactly. I'm not impressed, Augie, that you had that much faith in compact discs. I can't believe you had that much faith in your act that you got that many. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, come on, man. <laughs> by the way, Augie, that is literally the best way to handle getting roasted. You're just like, hey, come no, on, man. I heard <laughs> oh, you dick. I, I thought we were friends. <laughs> that's exactly how I do it. That's perfect. That's exactly how I do it. I exactly. Is, is the album called Better Jokes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a very funny set. That was a very funny uh, set. <laughs> comedian destroys career. <laughs> I, I love to use the EpiPen so you don't waste the money. I, my uh, my stepdad's father was very traditionally cheap. He would wait till it rained to wash his car because he didn't want to use the hose water because he thought that would cost him money. But he had a nursing home insurance, and at some at, at, he didn't need to go to the nursing home. But he went the last three years of his life just so he didn't waste his money. <laughs> I actually do the same thing with my uh, health insurance deductible. Uh, the end of every year, I just break my leg just to. <laughs> you've never broken anything. <laughs> I actually haven't. I've never had a broken. No, you've never run fast enough, or gotten a bike, or taken any sort of risk that would have broken anything. I've never broken anything either. Somehow, I don't know how that. <laughs> Bowers, Bowers, me talking shit to crowds in Indiana definitely is enough of a risk to break some bones. True. You've broken many people's spirits, Steve. You've done that. <laughs> I had never broken a bone until like seven years ago, six, seven years ago when I did break my ass. And then you broke I your started, ass. Yeah. And then I started you breaking broke some other stuff. I broke my coccyx. I, I, ah. uh, it was a perfect storm event. It was no fun. I was late to host comedy juice at the improv. And I hadn't even been. I didn't wait, even wait, host wait, wait. This story doesn't sound correct. You were late somewhere. This doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't involve and, a second story window. <laughs> and hosted in years either. And so I'm late, and it's a rainy day. It was the perfect storm injury. And I was, so I I go to the elevator in my old apartment building in Hollywood, and the elevator's broken. So I had to take the stairs. I go down the stairs as quick as I could, and then the last staircase, you had to go outside and then back into the stairs that go down to the garage. And I just quickly went out and back in, and the stairs were completely wet. And I didn't see it because also the light in the stairwell was out. And so I just slipped down 11 steps on my back and was bleeding, and my butt broke. And I pulled out of my parking, after crying a little bit in my car, I pulled out to the corner, and I at the corner of Hollywood, I... Thought, do I, do I turn left and go to the doctor or do I turn right and go to the improv? I'm like, fuck it, improv. And I go to the improv and I'm like drying off blood in the bathroom and, and hosted. So I had to go up and down all night, like eight, ten times while having a broken butt. It was not fun, but you do it for the love of the art, you guys. And you, you learn nothing from being late. <laughs> <laughs> right. can, I, can I share a real quick uh, Sammy Shore story? Uh, mm -hmm. Sammy Shore uh, opened for his son, Polly. And Sammy, had, you know, did stand up for 60 years or whatever. Uh, and this, so this story is like 10 years ago. So Sammy's in his 70s. He goes up on stage to, to do his opening set. On his way on stage, he falls over. He literally breaks his leg. He literally broke his leg. Sammy Shore leaned up against a stool at 75 or whatever he was, did his entire half hour, then brought up Polly. And then did the second show with a broken leg before he went to the goddamn hospital. Yeah. Damn. 
and Holy he shit. still and he still wasn't passed at the comedy store. <laughs> <laughs> I once I once performed with food poisoning. I thought that was bad. it wasn't a broken bone. I'm not impressed. One, one time, time I, I had to pee really bad. Yeah, one time I, had to pee. <laughs> I thought I was gonna throw up the whole time. It was crazy. I I have frequently performed while blood was coming out of my genitals. <laughs> wow. uh, she wasn't even on her period. <laughs> That was just from seeing the feature. <laughs> it was Tammy Shore. Yeah. All right. We got we got some tips coming in right now. Uh, Zara Benning threw in five bucks and said, hilarious set, Augie, but your intro destroyed me. Uh, destroyed me as well. Uh, and then we have uh, Matthew Plummer threw in five bucks and said, Augie's disgruntled Keebler elf should be a thing we call angry short people. Hilarious set. <laughs> We get some get some hate mail for that. Uh, Shaquille Syed threw him five bucks. Said for Augie, great set. Hmm. Uh, Kim Stewart threw him five bucks. Said Augie, congrats on the third. Very funny stuff. Uh, and uh, Tam Brown said uh, threw him five bucks. Said Augie Jonestown with Care Bears, amazing. Jerry, you got anything coming in on your end? Congrats uh, yeah. on the third. Very funny stuff. Sounds like somebody thinks it's funny that you were able to have another child. <laughs> I've got a friend who calls anybody with two over two kids a compulsive gambler, which I think is a good way to put it. <laughs> tut, tut, tut. Um, <laughs> so, you, that's uh, the one, man. That's the we, one. We got uh, two tips from uh, Technics for Augie. Uh, one says, Augie, did they find any ballots, though? Hope so. And the other one said, uh, Augie, for your Bowers Burn bailout bursary bonus. I also want to mention that there was a an amazing non-paid comment for Augie on the YouTube. Uh, no Middle Ground wrote, great internet, Augie, which just, that is how you know you had a great set. When people were like, <laughs> the connection was so clear. Yes! Yes! That's I can... Augie. Augie, you really connected with your audience. And that's <laughs> And that's all I got. Ben, I, I liked your story about running down the stairs and the, it, it, when it's raining or whatever. One time I was uh, speaking at a leadership conference in Ohio and we were like in the top level, like where the conference hall was. And there was a tornado coming, tornado warning. So we had to go to the basement, but the stairs were outside of the building. They were metal and it's a thunderstorm. It's raining. It's oh. raining. So we're like, okay, guys, we have to go down these metal stairs in a thunderstorm to get away from a tornado, but don't run too fast. You might fall down. So quickly as you can, hurry without speeding. It was fucking the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just 200 kids trying to go down this this uh, metal staircase without getting hit by lightning. It was fucking hilarious. Holy shit. In the future, when telling that story, call it a lightning storm. What? You know what I mean? Because lightning is what's going to hit at the thing, not thunder. You call them lightning storms? Yeah. Well, the lightning happens during a thunderstorm, Ben. They can be called lightning thunder storms, thunder storms too, the can't they? Noise. Can't they be called lightning storms also? They, I call them lightning storms. You call them you lightning storm like sounds... Like bugs or thunder bugs? I call them thunder bugs. <laughs> <laughs> lightning storm also <laughs> sounds like... Ben, have you ever seen like a lightning storm where it's just lightning and there's no rain or anything? Yeah. Like they have those in Oklahoma. To me, that's what a lightning storm is when it's only lightning. When it's a thunderstorm. Was anyone confused when Bowers said thunderstorm? Was anybody like, was there lightning? No. <laughs> I think so. I, I'm it, I, I rescind the note and I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's so uh, jarring speaking... when this show gets uh, helpful. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you can tell a story bombs when, they want to, when they're trying to change the title of it. Like, great story, but call it a lightning storm next time. <laughs> no, it was a good story, and I, sh I, I got caught up, and I was wrong. And I forg <laughs> will, will you ever forgive me? Sure. So speaking of uh, speaking of notes, first of all, uh, Tam threw in two bucks for a general. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Excellent. And said, uh, I think someone was trying to make Ben's death look like an accident with those stairs. Did he and Rachel know each other yet then? Uh, <laughs> also, speaking of notes, Taylor, would you mind sharing uh, the picture that that we had given no or Ben had given notes to yesterday? Do we have that up? Yeah, just a moment, please. Oh, is all there right. an update? Is there an update? There's an update. So oh, the story was... I thought about uh, it all night. 
We were joking about Jean Claude Van Damme and Yes <laughs> You got it. <laughs> yeah. So this is Ron Gould. Ron oh Gould God. created the Jean Claude Van Damme. So this that is, is incredible. Oh my God. Perfect. Is... Now, one little note. If he could be holding a Hoover, that it's <laughs> <laughs> That is so good. That is so good that I will withhold my one remaining note. It's so good. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh also we got uh we got a tip from uh Jessica Kybel threw in uh twenty bucks to Augie said that was really funny, such a great set. Uh twenty to uh to Jarrett suggesting a ha 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 yeah as the laugh. <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twenty bucks pre-tip to Lori, saying Lori's always incredible. And then uh, oh. another forty bucks to the show. So thank you so much, Jessica. Appreciate wow. the generosity. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Wow, the pressure's on. Yeah. I don't really? want it. Yeah, Lori or actually. Off. She also or left off, a note really. saying that if your set is not good this time, she would request it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won't give it back. Uh, I'm going to tank on purpose just to <laughs> just to teach a lesson of for de yeah. dears for your yeah. generosity. Take that. Yeah, that'll teach you to believe in me. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same to my parents. <laughs> oh wow, somebody's got live parents. Okay. <laughs> well, let's pull back the plural actually. Oh. Wow. We're gonna have a dead parent off right now. This sounds fucking fun. That's gonna be great. Oh my god. Batman wins. Yeah. <laughs> Steve's got one living parent. Once again, not quite the self deprecation you would hope for. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. It's like a weird brag. It's like a strange, humble brag. I've got a parent. You know what I mean? Well, it was because Lori was. It's a comedy sit right afterwards, though. It was like, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jared, we got anything else coming in? Nothing else from my end. All right, excellent. Well, let's go see if Lori will, will earn that 20 bucks then. There we go. Oh, so, uh, returning champion, and her mom died. Lori, come on, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I don't, I don't think of it as my mom died. I think of it as she beat COVID. By oh my God. <laughs> like, COVID dared her and she said, fuck you. And uh, she showed all her cards. Um, so <laughs> good for her. She did die from COVID in June, which uh, shocked me because I had, had been coughing on her since March. Like, it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It took too long as far as I'm concerned. She lived with me. This used to be her bedroom, and now it's a performance space where I make fun of her death. So uh, <laughs> she didn't die in vain. That's a good thing. But here's the thing. <laughs> I wanted. I was like, let me just go pre-COVID because I had stuff I was talking about before this pandemic, and one of them is that I got in a Twitter war with Stormy Daniels, who uh, is the porn star who slept with Donald Trump. And somehow in the Twitter war, somebody called me whorephobic. And I've been defending my honor ever since. Um, first of all, I never call women whores, okay? I think if you're a woman who has a lot of sex, you're lucky, okay? You're not a whore. You're, you're acting out sexual abuse. People like me, I act in sexual abuse, okay? So I love the whores. You're doing what I wish I could do. <laughs> Secondly, you think that I have a phobia of porn stars. Are you insane? I I am so grateful to porn stars, okay? Because I feel like porn is like a cookbook and porn stars act out the sex recipes for me. <laughs> like, oh, that one is five men, one woman, and it makes uh, enough jizz to feed a family. That's nice. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> First, show me things that I, I don't see and I wouldn't know how to do, you know? And now I feel, because of porn, I feel qualified. If a man wants to give birth to a doll from his anus, I can midwife that. So I, am <laughs> I am grateful for porn stars. Now, 
in other news, I got a puppy and she's eight months old and she was, she got her period. And I, for, I, I guess I didn't spay her in time and I didn't know I had to, she's a puppy. Like when my kid, my son went to kindergarten, I wasn't like, all right, time to get him a vasectomy. Like let him be a baby for a little bit. I didn't know my puppy would, would be making love to adult men. Little dogs, <laughs> or men, depending on your porn. Again, to go back. Oh my god! Here's what I'm saying: is is uh, watching her handle menstruation really was awesome to me because it, I, I guess I'd never watched a fellow female animal do it so differently. You know, I mean, she was not tidy. She used the entire apartment as a one giant pad and didn't give a shit and no, no shame. No, like, Oh, I'm not going to sit on the white couch this week. No, she fucking planted herself on the white couch that week. <laughs> so guys, all I'm saying is if you're sitting next to a woman, why don't you appreciate how tidy she's being? Cause there's other ways to handle your business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am. Uh, I, I guess I'll keep it thematically uh, here. My son just turned 14 and he wanted an iPhone, and I didn't get it to him because I, I don't think kids deserve to have devices at all. Okay, they, they have too. Aside from porn, they have too much information. Kids shouldn't have access to all the information in the world. Okay. My son learned about the Holocaust. Two days later, I didn't get him ice cream and he called me a Nazi. He doesn't deserve to know about the Holocaust. He hasn't earned the Holocaust, okay? I didn't get my first iPhone till I was 45. The way I parent is, if I didn't have it at your age, you're not having it at that age, okay? And that worked for me. That's why my mom didn't get me a polio vaccine until I was 35. <laughs> All right. I think that's my time, right? <laughs> yeah. Lori Martin, everybody. Lori Martin. On Tim Jarvis, yeah. open top right of the screen is our Venmo. You can PayPal at SDLCshow.com. Of course, you can super chat on the YouTube. By the way, Lori, that that feud with Stormy Daniels, that was when she like did stand up last March, right? Uh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So uh I also uh, so I had I had tweeted that anyone who pays thirty dollars to see Stormy Daniels do stand up for the first time deserves to have paid thirty dollars to see Stormy Daniels do stand up for the first time. <laughs> And there, yeah, there were people who came for me as well, but she is still doing stand up. Did you know that? Even during the pandemic, it's once every three months, but she's still doing it and she's still charging like 30 bucks for tickets and people are still paying it. You know, okay. During a pandemic, I mean, she obviously, she's been hit more than the rest of us because her job is to have sex, right? So uh, I'll give her this. I'll give it to her, but she on, this is just, this is a true thing. I, I think if she had gone on the road and done like the Jimmy Walker thing where she does five minutes up front, then introduces like five female comics who are filthy, she mm -hmm. would have made a killing and they would have too, instead of her deciding to be a headliner right off the bat, but she's yeah. too stupid to think of that. Yeah. That was the problem I had. And by the way, her job is actually for people to give it to her. So it's good that you do as well. <laughs> Wait, her first 25 is kind of tight. It's not bad. The first 25 is okay. It gets a little oh, off the oh. last 25. <laughs> <laughs> they only just watched 90 seconds of it. Guys, I'm doing a psych joke. I, I need the camera right now. <laughs> oh, God. Right, go. But she fucked Donald. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like to call when a woman has all the sex, even when she shouldn't, I call her a hoarder. Is that wrong? Okay. <laughs> How do you she has an H or a WH? <laughs> oh, it's a WH. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, she, she at least does have the self-hating nature you need to be a comedian. She fucked Trump. I mean, she's got the cred. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is true. And by the way, Laura, I absolutely agree with you. I do not begrudge people who want to try stand-up comedy who aren't comics. But it is weird when they just suddenly become headliners. Like, oh, yeah. that's not how it works. 
people can change careers if they want. You can be you can be in porn for 30 years and then be like, you know what, I'm gonna be a doctor if you go to med school. You can't just put on the outfit you wore in the porn. <laughs> <laughs> once, we once had on a Sunday show, we had an Instagram comic. She was a super uh, popular Instagram comic and her entire act, she brought her boyfriend on stage. He sat on a, st on a, on a, on a stool and she made fun of him for 40 minutes. That was her entire act was clowning her boyfriend. And it was hilarious. I didn't want to, I mean, I wouldn't have been the guy, but he just kind of sat there, which like, look at this motherfucker's shoes. Look at these pants right here. This motherfucker, it was just, that's all she did for 40 minutes. It was amazing. And that's, that's how Micah Fox started her career. <laughs> <laughs> there are people though. There are people like, you know, in Indy, uh, you know, we knew, uh, so Pat McAfee played Morty's. He was funny from the jump. He was the, yeah. you know, he's the, the punter he the for the Colts. the Colts. But yeah, he's, yeah. Well he, well, he called crackers. He tried to do it right. He called crackers, the other show, other club in town, and he wanted to start comedy. And they said, okay, he's the most popular person in Indiana, by the way, has like a million Twitter followers. And they're like, you can come do three minutes on the open mic since it's your first time. And so he said, fuck that. He rented a theater, sold 3,000 tickets, and recorded a special his first time he ever did a comedy. Did an hour wow. and 25. But he was genuine. He was genuinely funny. Like he, well, you know, obviously a little bit green, but genuinely funny, like had the chops that he could be an everyday stand up comic if he wanted to be. No, he'll never be able to be an everyday stand up comic because he's famous. I mean, he was performing in front. It was a bringer show and, I'm, and I, everyone kills at a bringer show. And <laughs> for, seriously, it was. people came because they liked him. And he if he's just half good, you can do well at a bringer. But yeah. if you're famous, you never get the the five or 10 years you need to suck anonymously before you become a comic that can work in front of everybody. So and, well, with well, a second, Stormy, Stormy Daniels definitely had the 10 years sucking anonymously. <laughs> Damn it, Ben. I was trying to get there. You we got all getting there. there. I was trying to be there. there. You guys were so, fighting over each other. That was an ugly fight. Lori, I could Lori, tell that every real. comic had the same joke. I was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to get this it in. out. That was great. That no was way in hell. Yo, for real, Lori, like, like, I have seen plenty of comics who do like those, you know, self-produced giant bringers because they're famous for some other reason, whether it is social media or sports or et cetera. And I will say Pat was genuinely funny. Like, he's one of the few people where I saw stuff, he was genuinely funny. I hosted a, a fundraiser um, for her. It was a Hurricane Harvey benefit in Houston. And uh, um, or no, sorry, I produced it and Arian Foster hosted it. He'd never done stand up, but he did a couple of, you know, just jokes between people and not every one of them hit. But overall, they were very, very good. Like there are every now and then there's someone where you could just be like, all right, if that person put the work in and they wanted to, they could be a comic. But most of the people and Stormy Daniels seems to be one of them. Most of the people are just like, I'm just going to ride off this fame that I have and not ever write a joke. But I do have a question. While I have extreme disdain for that typically, but for conversation's sake, you say that you don't get to just start being that job because you put the outfit on. But doesn't the market dictate, though, if you – why should you have to start with small audiences if you – like if you start your own business suddenly after 25 years in the workforce, you don't have to start in the mail room of well, your own company. If you, if you want to be good at that business, starting in a mail room doesn't help you become a comedy agent, <laughs> except because William Morris and Endeavor and CAA and stuff are assholes and make you do that. You don't learn how to be an agent by sorting mail. Like what I'm saying is the skills it takes to be a good comic come from being a comic. She can make all the money she wants, but the idea is to be respected by other people in your profession, you actually have to be good at that profession. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've never have... tried. <laughs> <laughs> I've been good at this for a long time and no one respects me, so I don't think that works either, Steve. I don't know how that works. Augie, what happened to your kitchen? <laughs> well, we had to move, the, the, the kids came home, so I had to move it outside. Uh, two things, Steve. <laughs> First of all, you need to point out that Arian is the guy's name. It's not just a nickname of some <laughs> and did stand up. And it's he's and he's a black name. guy also. Very sensitive for your Anne Frank trip. I, I don't think it. you can say that. I don't think you can say that, Steve. Uh, and secondly, Lori, will you ever be happy? All you do is complain about how women don't get any jobs in stand up. Then they hire a woman, and you're still upset. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged, Yogi Yogi. <laughs> Not that woman. God damn it. <laughs> well, she took the jobs from people who actually deserved it. 
Um, I think well, that was the point for me in a lot of comics is like, if you want to hire, there are there are there are a thousand women that could do that job better than her. Maybe they wouldn't draw mm-hmm. as much. We all understand that. But I think that was the point that a lot of people had is that all these clubs that aren't putting any women headliners on their calendar yeah. are very quick to hire Stormy Daniels. I think, yes, 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 and yes. I think I'm making the point better than Lori because I'm a man. <laughs> But <laughs> well, people are listening to it more because you're a man. <laughs> All right, I'm actually now. Uh, I think we should we should let's tip explain. So uh, we got a we got a bunch of tips uh, a bunch of tips coming in. So uh, Doug and Kasim threw in five bucks and said blood from genitals. What? Um, someone's got to explain that one. Apparently. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, all right, those are some game entries. Uh, Kim Stewart threw in five bucks, said Lori for the dark stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg Gorman, this is a general, uh, threw in 10 bucks, said general for the show. First time in a long time to be able to watch the show live. Thank you for being here this year. We appreciate it, Gray. Uh, we literally have no other legal option. Um, <laughs> Uh, Lori, uh, got a tip. Five bucks from Tam Brown said, uh, how would one advertise their butthole baby midwifery services? Uh, <laughs> wonderful set. So great to see you on SDSC again. Uh, Shaquille Saeed threw in five bucks said for Lori. Thanks for teaching us about porn and doggy menstruation. Most informational <laughs> show ever. Uh, Matthew Plummer threw in five bucks and said, Lori, he hasn't earned the Holocaust is a phrase I never expected to hear. Hilarious set. <laughs> As always, I've actually gotten that comment on a couple of YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> Gary Gorman threw in uh, 20 bucks, 10 each to Augie and to Lori. Uh, said it was a pre tip, but it came in after their sets. Um, <laughs> and, and threw in two more bucks and said, Lori, forgot to include that I love your Twitter wars. They are quality entertainment. They absolutely are. Lori's Twitter is fantastic. Um, and one of my favorite things, actually, oh, and Zara also threw in five bucks as uh, Sensational Lori. One of my favorite things that Lori does on Twitter is she tweets the stuff that Trump does as if Hillary was doing it and, like, to see what the horror reaction would be. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Jared, uh, anything? Yes, I do. Uh, before we get to those, I hope you don't mind. Uh, Lori, when you said he didn't, uh, he called you a Nazi for not getting you an ice cream comb. It sounds like he learned about, he didn't learn enough about the Holocaust. You know, it's like he started reading the Wikipedia. It's like, the Nazis were bad guys. And he's like, okay, that's all I need to know. No, no, I, no Jared. I, I told him the Nazis didn't give Jewish people ice cream. So that's what happened, right? In mm-hmm. fairness, that is that's a it. little bit of what happened. <laughs> There was no I ice cream drill. for sure. Jeez, I'm busy. And yeah. uh, Bowers, I want to see the episode of Intervention where they do sex hoarders. Like, you don't need all these penises. You don't need them all. <laughs> and in fairness to Stormy Daniels, she does care about helping the younger generation of artists. She recently did a porn with five other women who it was their first porn ever, and she called it her type five. <laughs> So, three tips for Lori. We got to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, but Boingo... tips for Stormy. Uh... <laughs> Oingo Boingo Long Last Name sent $5 for Lori. My pup stained our tan leather couch with blood stains before we got her fixed. So, uh, can sympathize. Uh, Technic sent uh, $2. Lori, yet again, you handle dark humor with grace. What a nice thing to say. Mm, thank you. And uh, Zara Bending sent $5, said sensational, Lori. Thanks. Uh, one thing I really enjoy is the idea that they're like, yeah, the, the dog bled on the couch. Now we have to get the dog fixed and the couch fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like to reupholster my dog, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there, we also had uh, one general come in from Technics with a lot of hashtags and ads, so I'm not really sure what the intention here was. At Amina Soleil, hashtag bring Micah back. At Mally Kwan, hashtag stalker. So those seem like a lot of references that I don't get. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, by the way, Lori, uh, Bowers likes to reupholster his jackets. So. 
car upholstery. I take them off couches and make them into jackets. It's a different... <laughs> the, the back of this coat yeah, actually has so a dog blood on, your jacket. on it. Yeah, it's got a dog blade blood stain on the back. If I show you, that. <laughs> I just assume that was alcohol, but that's my fault. Um, all right, can we can we do the game then? Play this game. Let's do the game. Let's play the game. All right, the game. We, there are so many entries on. I don't know what you're seeing on YouTube, Jarrett, but I got a ton coming in over here. Yeah. Uh, the game is Penis, a 90s movie. Uh, so take the title of any 90s movie, replace one word with the word penis. Don't add it. Just replace one word with the word penis. Uh, and let's do this. So, Jared, do you have any uh, unpaid entries that you liked? I do. Uh, what do we got here? We got um, uh, uh, Interview with a Penis from Z Neighbor. <laughs> tut, tut, tut. <laughs> tut, tut, tut. <laughs> uh, we got... Um, Angelica sent he got penis. <laughs> uh, Werner De Jong sent the penis trap. Oh. And I think this is if I could vote for this one, I would just without hearing any of the other paid entries. Uh, Natalie Renee, she's all penis. <laughs> so good. She's all penis. She's just all penis. <laughs> Still not still a she. How, that's, how'd that's the date go? She's all <laughs> she's all penis. <laughs> Very soft. I mean the date, yeah, the date started off soft, but it ended pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> the more uh, I, all right. Me, the taller she got, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so let's uh, let's start with our front row. Uh, so throw your hands up, uh, Taylor, if you want to uh, start highlighting some people. Yep, uh, Zara. Hey, I got four. Uh, four weddings and a penis. Nice. <laughs> um, shout out to Stormy Daniels, penis collector. <laughs> um, happy penis. Nice. And if you didn't, if you didn't get around to getting the director's cut, penis in the hood. <laughs> oh my god! Clever. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Shannon Burke. Um, I have. Fear and penis in Las Vegas. <laughs> um, good penis hunting. Nice. Nice. Edward penis hands. Oh, good. <laughs> A classic. This one's for my husband. Eight millimeter, the penis edition. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. All right, Hayden. From your husband or for your husband? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> All right. I have uh, 10 things I hate about penis, which I believe is Carmel's biopic. <laughs> <laughs> and I have self penis, bigger, longer, and uncut. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Lady. All right. I have um, – also, I didn't research if any of these were in the 90s. Screw me. Uh, honey, I Shrunk the Penis. Um, That's way mighty... better than Honey, I Penis the Kids. <laughs> I hate that so much. The Mighty Penis, and then uh, Free Willy. It didn't need to change because it had to <laughs> Damn. Taking Penis Collector off my list. <laughs> it's still on the Penis Collector's list. True. Uh, I have penis dogs. <laughs> nice. Die penis too. <laughs> ten, things, ten things I hate about penis. <laughs> and penis fever. <laughs> Get that checked out. You don't want penis fever. It's real bad. Bill Thompson. <laughs> That's uh, one time you hope they do use the touch thermometer. Am I wrong? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> uh, put, on their, put on their forehead. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, where's where's uh, Bill Thompson? How, how come you're not spotlighting Bill Thompson? I, this can't be you, not in a corner or with the same wall pattern. And he's got <laughs> sleeves. It's a big day for Bill. Right. Sleeves in company. What have you done with What have you done with Bill? <laughs> All right, what you got, Bill? Uh, hand that rocks the penis. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Excellent. I love that one. Uh, Matthew Plummer. Uh, I've got three. I've got uh, Dances with a Penis. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Penis Walking. Nice. And, uh, English film, The Penis of King George. 
<laughs> Tina from New Zealand. I have got the silence of the penis. <laughs> you hear that, Carmel? <laughs> toy penis. <laughs> Not Toy Story. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I got. Uh, I slightly changed this one a little bit. Steve and the giant penis. <laughs> There's me going self-deprecating again. Damn <laughs> big penis always in my way. <laughs> so I was on the road doing 742 cities, uh, and I tripped on my penis so many times I didn't even know if it was a staircase, a water slide, or my actual body parts. Self-deprecation. <laughs> <laughs> actually very frustrating you have to get a bigger hotel room it's there's a lot of that. <laughs> marissa i've got uh the iron penis nice. <laughs> uh the penis show <laughs> uh instead of american beauty american penis and right. then jurassic penis <laughs> oh, oh, oh gross <laughs> Damn. that's the one that was gross <laughs> yeah Lucky it's old <laughs> Oh, okay. I have swing your penis. <laughs> um, the penis quiz. Nice. Or penis show, either way. <laughs> and penis as good as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then I had penis to judgment day. <laughs> Uh, all right. I've got uh, Schindler's penis. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I could have jacked so many more. <laughs> penis in black. <laughs> and the hunt for red penis. <laughs> <laughs> got a dog. <laughs> Shaquille. I have a couple. Um, good penis hunting. Nice. Home alone with penis. <laughs> <laughs> and long <My> pandemic. <laughs> long penis goodbye. <laughs> oh, God. That's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did hear a lot of these already. A lot of group think on this. Uh, Oingo Boingo, long last name, sent a jaw penis, like the movie Jawbreaker. Um, uh, Zara B, four weddings and a penis. Nice. Uh, penis in the hood, also Zara B. She, she said those already. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Literally, <laughs> she was the same one who said those. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not much as group thing as if this is the same person. She's like, oh, uh, these, these duplicate entries from the person who sent these. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are coming in on the YouTube. I just figured that they weren't the same as the ones that were in the front row. Doesn't matter. Uh, Dana Z. Bunster, uh, I married a penis murderer. <laughs> uh, Razor sent Dickless in the movie Clueless. Nice. <laughs> uh, Werner De Jong sent the sixth penis. <laughs> I see. Uh, Jonathan S. James and the Giant Penis. Nice. Uh, Jonathan S. Inspector Penis. Inspector Penis. She's all penis. Uh, Julia Wait, Schwartz. Wait, isn't Inspector Penis's rival Dr. Claw? Sorry, go ahead. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pussy cat. Julia Schwartz, 12 penises, like 12 monkeys. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Natalie Smith sent um, deep penis or penis impact, whichever one you like. <laughs> uh, Hunter Timoteo sent a uh, bat penis forever. Oh. Uh, uh, Dana Z. Bunter dances with penis. Uh, Amina Saleh, penis and the giant peach. 
Penis <laughs> and the giant peach. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, also, Mina Soleil, the penis whisperer. Uh, mm-hmm. Edward Penis Hands. Uh, what's eating Gilbert's penis? <laughs> uh, the hand that rocks the penis. And uh, let's see. Oh, Zara B sent a correction. Could have also been four skins in a funeral. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, we got. Uh, is is oh, that it for yours, Jared? Because I got I some got- on Venmo. One last one is uh, from Razor, uh, Schwanz of a Woman. (laughs) Uh, All right. Uh, So we also got Edward Penis Hands coming in from Tesha. Um, But in addition, she also has Buffy the Penis Slayer. Um, We've got uh, Frank Berman, how Stella got her penis back. Uh, Kim Stewart uh, (laughs) is a pretty penis. Um... Savannah Martin coming in with five of them. There's a penis jam. Um, <laughs> the thin red penis. <laughs> uh, penis powers. <laughs> uh, penis combat. And then the classic holiday re- holiday remake, Penis on 34th Street. <laughs> uh, uh, while that was going on, I got three more, Steve. Uh, all right. I got uh, Oingo Boingo Long Last Name sent Penis World, like Wayne's World. Uh, Jonathan S. sent uh, Home Alone Tune, Lost in New Penis. (laughs) And uh, Jennifer Story sent uh, Office Penis. Nice. We also got more coming in. People love the penis game. We've Mm. got uh, Frank Berman as uh, a few good penises. Um, Penis and Butthead to America. Uh, white penises can't jump and <laughs> stop or my penis will shoot. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, we got we got some more. Uh, Gray Gorman uh, throwing in a bunch of entries here. We've got penis water for chocolate. Uh, we've got poetic penis justice. Uh, penis park, bigger, longer, and uncut. Uh, don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your penis juice in the hood. <laughs> uh, hot shots part penis. And the naked gun, two and a half, the smell of penis. Uh, and then, uh, Gus Walsh also, uh, Beavis and butt penis to America. <laughs> and then, uh, Kira Stein threw in a couple, uh, and didn't didn't realize it was a '90s at first, and threw in uh, the seven year itch on your penis, <laughs> <laughs> and 2001: A Penis Odyssey, but then corrected it and said uh, new entry: Die Hard with a Penis. So, <laughs> all right, uh, Jared, did any more come in, or are we caught up? I think we're all caught up. Holy all shit! Right. What a game! That Can I really just? Good. Can I just quickly explain that uh, sometimes this show creates very strange life situations. I had to excuse myself for about a minute, 30 seconds right before the game because Carmela has people here showing us what kind of blackout blinds we can get for the living room and what fabric (laughs) won't have light come through. And I literally was like, interesting. So the light would come through to some degree in in these sheen uh, drapes. I understand. Pardon me. I have to get back on the air. I'm doing a show. And I'm just hearing, penis, penis in New York, penis in this. (laughs) And they're definitely hearing it through this door. They're 100% hearing it through this door. They know I'm an idiot. Well, sounds like you're going to get a good deal on drapes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I liked a lot of those. Um, I liked the thin red penis was funny. Uh, I did like the hand that rocked the penis. Um, let's see. I, I was going to go with I, I married a penis murderer. I thought that was the best one. But then uh, uh, stop or my penis will shoot. Took it uh, right at the last second. Took it over. <laughs> stop or my penis will shoot is my vote. Uh, Augie, which one did you like the best? Uh, I really liked the uh, the director's cut of uh, uh, Penis in the Hood. <laughs> All I right. That one very much. Lori. Wow, I have penis fatigue. Uh, there are like so many good ones. I can't, they're all, they're all coming at me. Um. <laughs> it's like being on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Stormy Daniels started doing stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
The yeah, I like the director's cut too. If I have to pick one, that that made me go, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'm sorry, I should have written down some That's of my right. favorites. No, that that counts. Uh, we're Jared, all Jared. We're, all, we're all winners. You said. Yeah. I like to uh, stop them. My penis will shoot. That's my vote. All right. <laughs> we got two boys in the hood or penis in the hood. We got two. Uh, stop or my penis will shoot. Ben. I'm ben. very torn between three. I'm like, it's a three way tie in my eyes. Uh, white penis can't jump. <laughs> it's so weird and <laughs> fantastic and true. And I just love the idea that even and white true. penis. <laughs> and I love that white penises are, are still worse athletes than black penis. <laughs> What's eating Gilbert penis is fantastic. But Home Alone 2, Lost the New Penis is fantastic as well. My vote goes to White Penis Can't Jump. All right. White Penis Can't Jump. Uh, I'm breaking the tie. It's right now between uh, Penis in the Hood and Stop or My Penis Will Shoot. But I'm going with, uh, because of the director's cut, I'm going with uh, Penis in the Hood. Very, very funny. Nicely done. Claim your prize, sdscshow.com. Uh, ben, I assume you got some of these. Uh, Augie or Lori, do you have any? Uh, I got a couple uh, that we missed. Uh, we missed the unbearable lightness of penis. Uh, we missed the the English penis. And, uh, of course, we missed Knob Hill. <laughs> I also just want to quickly point out that this is an incredible back-to-back -back streak, the likes of which we've never seen for Zara Bending. Two huge, prestigious awards, back-to-back -back days. <laughs> From the Vice Chancellor's Teaching Award straight to the Penis Game winner. I mean, the range of this woman never ceases to amaze. It's, it's an honor. Thank you. I'm honored to receive this award. Like 2,000 people were nominated. You know, only a few can win. It was a hard competition, but my, somehow she pulled it out. Don't worry, just English panel of judges. Augie, I also wanted to say, I thought the English penis was way too long. <laughs> Laura, do you have any? Uh, I just thought of one, the uh, the God Penis Part Three. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Sorry, Garrett, you got any? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, uh, the uh, Academy Award winning film uh, Life Is Penis. Nice. <laughs> I've got uh, Eat Drink Man Penis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, saving Ryan's Privates. Uh, the Penis versus Larry Flint. <laughs> and uh, Apollo 13 Inches. Nice. <laughs> Larry Flint was really one of the penises of great advocates, but it was fine. That's true. All right, Steve, Ben, I'm going to get. I got seven. All right, I'll start. The 90s classic with Dave Chappelle and Jim Brewer, Half Penis. <laughs> nice. I have the uh, Sharon Stone film, Basic Penis. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the holiday classic, Penis for the Holidays. <laughs> nice. Instead of pump up the volume, I have pump up the penis. <laughs> nice. What we know this character's wish that the movie was titled, Penis and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have the uh, Nick Cage, John Travolta classic, Penis Off. <laughs> <laughs> 10 things I hate penis you <laughs> those are just the first two what are the other eight um, I have uh, penis been kissed the penis of the Mohicans <laughs> the usual penis <laughs> don't, don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your penis in the hood uh, Muriel's penis. <laughs> Will Smith, Gene Hackman, an enemy of the penis. <laughs> and my last one, the Englishman who went up a penis and then came down a mountain. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got three more. Wesley Snipes in Penis 57. <laughs> Always bet things come to those who Always wait bet on black that's right. right that's a i missed Ron that was 57. the ketchup that was a ketchup slogan 
Yeah. Oh, I see 57. I get it. Uh, <laughs> we've got we've got the uh, Bruce Willis classic Armageddon some penis. <laughs> and penis hood men in tights. <laughs> so, uh, nicely done. County. All right, I think we did it. Uh, <laughs> it's time to sing the song, Ben. Let's go. It's a Levy Corbin time. She's drying for some wine. She can't drink wine because she's about 14 years old. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Levy 14. Corbin. Welcome to have you. Hmm? <laughs> uh, and then I have Bowers' this Hangover. <laughs> this is um, how Ben thinks Steve is always. Ah, I hate everything. It's most meant to say hate. Fuck you! <laughs> uh, and then I have Steve tripping over his penis, which for our comics will be very confusing. <laughs> um, thank you for your cervix. <laughs> An adorable massacre. <laughs> oh. I love the whores. <laughs> uh, that's a good laugh. Jarrett, try that one. And then, <laughs> uh, and then I have Jarrett trying out his laughs. I think you should try out. <laughs> uh, and then I have, my name is Augie Montoya. You yelled at my aunt. Prepare to die. <laughs> you deserved it, Augie. You should have peed before the show. Oh my God. My last That's one amazing. Is, she just wanted to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Love that he's booping my nose. Yeah, he's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, great job. That art for my hero wow. on Instagram. That was amazing. That was so <laughs> good. That was so good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Augie, where, where, where do we find you at in the world, Augie? How do we follow you around? Yeah, I don't know if you know this. There's a quarantine. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I've been on like Twitter or something, man. I'm not coming to your house. You uh, yeah. Once I mean, you have kids, a, I don't see you till uh, they graduate. That's how it works. Two G's, A U G G I E, Augie Smith on, on Twitter. That's usually the best place. I am coming to Augie's house, but just to yell at his aunt more. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, buddy. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Lori, how do we find Thank you, you guys. on the internet? Thanks, bud. Uh, also on Twitter, any Lori sixteen A N Y L A U R I E sixteen at Twitter. On Very Twitter. cool. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for being here again, Lori. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at Bowers Comedy as always. Ben, what you got coming up? You can find me at Ben Glebe. I have launched, relaunched recently a short one minute or so long Instagram TV series called A Minute with Glebe. There's about twenty four of them. You can catch up on with the hashtag. And my podcast coming back next week. But tonight, we've got Glebe Off the Top, Crowd Work, and Improvised Madness with special guest Jamie Kennedy. He's doing some stand-up and might be joining me for some of the filtered madness, bringing back some of his Jamie Kennedy experiment craziness. So hot tub broth vibes coming at us with host Jen Saunderson. Use promo code SDSC for a discount ticket, and you get two free tickets to bring two friends to the show as well. We want to spread the word for the holidays. Tonight, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 Eastern. Very cool. Steve? Uh, check out my director's commentary show. I almost said director's cut, but that's nope. Check out my director's <laughs> commentary show coming up uh, December 10th, where I heckle myself, uh, looking at some of my heckle clips with Trump supporters. Um, tickets start at a dollar, then they go to five, go to 10, go to 15. So get yours quick. The price has already been going up. Um, and you get also, the tickets after the show, it costs hundred and fifty dollars to go to the show. So get it before the show if you can. I always recommend get tickets before the show you're trying to see. That's yeah, just, yeah. Especially with this price structure, you really have to. Yeah, good practice in general. Actually, they they they're free after the show. Um, but you can't watch. <laughs> uh, and uh, I am uh, Wednesday. I am starting to record uh, new episodes of my brand new podcast called Be a Better Man. Uh, so that'll be forthcoming. Keep on the lookout for that.
Very cool. Awesome. Uh, Jerry or Steve, we got anything to catch up on before we let the audience come? Uh, nothing for Venmo. Jerry, you got anything coming in? Uh, no, nothing. Uh, just like to say, JarrettBernstein.com and uh, check out the Is This Anything podcast with me, Rob Ryan, Anthony Capper, and Brett Druck. Very cool. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, audience, yet again. You were awesome, as always. So we will see you on Tuesday. Tuesday, we had a couple days off. Um, so we'll see you Tuesday. Thanks so much. Uh, Jared, anything you want to say before you get out of here, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go You're right. It was a very hour. funny show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go sleep for another hour. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. All right. I got nothing. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you all for being with us. Happy, happy holidays to all of you. Tabor, out. <laughs> <laughs>